debugging and error handling. In this video series of uh, SSIS uh, 2012 integration services, I'm talking about uh, debugging and error handling. In this specific video, I'm talking about debug and troubleshoot in development environment. I'm Rosarat, SQL Server MVP author and trainer, and this is one of the video tutorials of Red Hat website. Uh, first of all, I'm talking about how to deb debug in SSDT or SQL Server data, data tools. In previous uh, videos, you've learned how to uh, what is SSI package and what are control flow tasks, how we can use control flow tasks and containers to perform different uh, operations in a size package but in during this operation you might uh, get some failures some errors that you need to debug and troubleshoot uh, debugging uh, would happen in SQL Server data tools which is your main development uh, environment uh, there is a progress uh, or execution result tab which shows you what happened in the um, control flow list or some part of data flow it shows you some information uh, um, like uh, a status like uh, for example number of rows transfer, uh, transferred like uh, any error happened uh, you can use some kind of breakpoints if you are a Visual Studio, if you are familiar with Visual Studio there are different kind of breakpoints which I will talk about in this uh, video uh, you can enable and disable tasks, so if you want to just uh, run a specific task, you can enable that task uh, and execute that. If you do not want to include that task, you can disable that. You can execute a specific task or container. In this way, you can just execute one, of, one part of the uh, package that you want. And there are some windows like watch uh, locals autos uh, which are quite handy when you are debugging with some kind of breakpoints in SQL Server data tools. These are options that we, these are things that we will talk about in this video. Uh, first of all, execution result window in SQL Server data tools. When you execute your package, you, you will see a progress window, a progress tab actually in your uh, main package designer that progress tab sh uh, shows you what happened in the package what tasks are running how, m how much time uh, spent for running each task if there is any error that error would show there uh, the mm, details of that error de depends on different uh, scenarios um, that progress window or progress tab will be renamed to results tab when the package finish execution so the progress and execution result tab are both same with just a different naming for progress at the time of running execution result at the time of uh, completing the task uh, it is very useful for debugging you can enable and disable tasks uh, during the sql server data tools and uh, you can execute tasks or container uh, there are list, there are some breakpoints that you can use in SQL Server data tools. For example, if uh, you got a failure in a specific part of the package, you can enable a breakpoint in that um, um, a specific task or container. There are different kind of breakpoints, and when uh, that breakpoint is actually kind of a, a pause spot for that uh, code execution so the code uh, compiles and execute up to that uh, breakpoints at, at that point of time it will pause and shows you some values that you would require in autos locals and watch window uh, that uh, it's uh, quite handy for you because you will understand uh, what is the values of um, your variables and does those cause any kind of issues or problems or not uh, there are different kinds of uh, hit counts when you create a breakpoint the default one is always so you can say that uh, when i put a breakpoint that breakpoint will uh, pause the execution always so this means that every time that execution of package uh, execution of code uh, uh, reach to that breakpoint that will uh, cause a uh, pause. Uh, 
So this means that if, for example, you uh, put a breakpoint in a specific part of a for each loop, as long as for each loop runs and that uh, task that uh, as long as that tasks run, this breakpoints will hit. You can say that uh, you just want to uh, get the, for example, uh, five uh, hit count of that execution or greater than or equal to something or hit count multiple which uh, only pass in the uh, integer multiple of a counter. I will show you some samples of the hit count in the uh, demo sample and uh, right now we are uh, looking at the debugging in SQL Server data tools. Uh, here I have a sample SSIS package. Uh, this is the sample SSIS package from the um, video tutorial for each loop container file enumerator uh, from this video series. Uh, so in this uh, package we have uh, for each loop container which loops through some files. Those files are in a source files directory and generate the file name, load data from that file into a database and archive that file and log something into, into the database. Um, before doing that, I can, uh, as I said, I can enable or disable part of the package. For example, I do not want archive file for this example, example so I just right click on that and disable that. This means that this archive file will not run anymore because this is enable I can right uh, disable I can right click and enable it as uh, every time that I want before doing that I'm just doing some kind of preparation so I remove any customer records that are coming from uh, any files which are not customer underscore three that CSV okay there is nothing there and I want to execute this package. Usually this package, as you've seen in previous uh, examples, it, it would run, uh, but in this example, I've changed some kind of codes to cause this package to fail. Uh, as you see, this package runs uh, through different files and each file loads into the uh, database. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, here we have a failure. The first, uh, Mm, actually pointer of failure is the red sign here the, the red sign shows that there would be a failure you can see this progress window this is the progress window that I talked about in the slides so when I go to that progress window I can see that there are some information here for example it says that task load data into the DB which is one of the tasks here it's started, validation started, and uh, validation completed. So there are some kind of information here. There are some kind of warnings. You can use this to work on the warnings, but uh, for this example, we just focus on the errors. So there is an error, as you can see here, and I want to find out what is the error reason. So as uh, I scroll down to find the first instance of error. You might find many instances of the error, but the first one is the, uh, the most important one. As you can see here, the error uh, text message, uh, this is, says that the error happened in OLEDB destination, which is our destination in this data flow. And this has some error description. Unfortunately, there is a bug here that doesn't show the full description here. So I right click on the error message, the first error message typically, uh, and copy message text. Then it's good to open notepad and paste the error message here. So when I paste the error message here, it shows me some information, metadata information about the OLED destination again and the description of message, which is violation of primary key constraint PK underscore customer. And more description, which is cannot insert duplicate key in object customer. Duplicate key is this one. So you can see that the, in this data flow, there is a customer record that 
inserting into the database and because that customer records probably exist in that in that database then this caused failure so we have exact error message and uh, with the exact source of the error that happened so this is quite useful as you can see this is the progress window that shows us this information if i stop the package notice to that progress if i stop the package this will change to execution results so if you want to troubleshoot your package to find out why this caused failure and what happened what was the error go to execution result or progress tab and find the error that caused that problem um, in most of the times the error is the first er instance of error open that in the notepad and find the error uh, you can also use some kind of um, breakpoints to get more information here for example here uh, we want to find out what which file actually caused this error we have those kind of information here as you can see this says that customer underscore three that csv started and this error happened when that started so this means that customer underscore three that csv caused that error but uh, let's say we don't have we don't consider this for now just to find out how we can work with breakpoints and what are useful uh, use of breakpoints here how we can use breakpoints for getting this kind of information uh, we have a variable here if i right click on the package which is file name this variable holds the file name information so if I get the, this variable value at the time of execution that the failure happens, then I will understand which actually uh, file caused this failure. So before running that, I'm again cleaning everything except customer underscore three that CSV. So if you want to run this examples, remember to do this before running that. Then I right click on the container, remember to right click on the container and I am going to edit breakpoints. Here you can see that there are different uh, conditions for breakpoints. For example, I can break, put a breakpoint on error or I can put a breakpoint on progress or on warning or on pre-execute, which means that before execution of this container, this will stop, uh, pause actually. But for now, I want to put a breakpoint on every iteration of the loop. This is a specific kind of breakpoints that exist in just kind of uh, for each loop and for loop containers. There are uh, these kind of uh, breakpoints are quite generic breakpoints, which you will find in most of the tasks, but there are some kind of specific breakpoints like uh, every iteration of the loop in for each loop containers and i want hit count to be always i will show you how to change that further okay so when i put the breakpoints you can see that breakpoint sign here i start execution when i start execution you see that the execution starts and paused with uh, this uh, yellow sign here in the middle of that red uh, breakpoint sign and here I can see three windows autos locals and watch in the locals window I see list of variables so here that list of variables shows actually all system variables and user variables so here I can see file name variable or I can see anything machine name or anything like that here or if a list of variables or if I have lots of variables I go to watch window instead of that and here I can add any variables from the variable window with drag and drop or just with creating those for example I want all name here so I type in user double column double column file name and you can see that uh, this is the value of that variable if i continue execution so this is the value of the, this variable before this iteration if i continue the execution the first iteration of uh, for each loop will run and the second iteration uh, will uh, start before 
starting the second iteration, the package uh, execution again uh, pause at that time and this shows me the customer underscore two. So this shows that customer one was successful loading customer one. Customer two, we are about to run this at the moment. So I press just continue and the customer two is loading and populating into the database. So that was successful again. And then customer three is here. When I execute customer three, you see that the package execution fails and we will see the error which is same error in the Pragets window. So uh, having breakpoints and combination of breakpoints with those autos, locals and um, watch windows are quite useful uh, because we can understand the value of packages which is very handy at the time of development. But sometimes uh, mm, Assume that we are looping through thousands of files and uh, we know that, for example, this error happens after, uh, for example, 50 files after 100 files, not uh, in the first files that uh, we, uh, for example, are looking for. So instead of hitting this breakpoint always because this means that I should uh, press that continue button for thousand times. If instead of that, I just change that always to hit count greater than or equal to for that case that I mentioned, for example, we can say 100. So this means that this uh, execution of package will continue until the hit count be 100. So for this example, I just changed it to three to show you how this works. You know, we know that, um, for example, the uh, package will fail after this. So I just put it to three. For example, I don't know, is it failing after three or four or something like that? So I just put it to three with hit count greater than or equal to three. Before execution, again, I just run this script and I come back here when I execute the package you can see that the package start execution in the first iteration and even second iteration without any pause on the breakpoints but uh, it would pause on the breakpoints which is actually the third hit count of the breakpoints and this is the points that we want actually so with uh, and you see that we found that failure and we can go again to the progress or execution result window or tab and find the error message as we did before. Uh, so using those breakpoints, uh, hit counts are quite useful. You can choose any of these you want. There are different kinds of breakpoints and using the breakpoints with uh, uh, variables, uh, not variables, with Autos, locals, and watch windows are highly recommended. So what we've seen in this video was progress execution result tab, how to use breakpoints to find uh, the cause of that error, enable disabling task, execute tasks and containers, watch uh, locals and um, autos window. Uh, in Next videos of this series, we, uh, I'll talk about how to log the errors in somewhere or how to uh, log in production or different kinds of uh, logging scenarios and event handlers and that sort of thing.